and welcome back to the Wellness Check. Today, we're going to be talking about the differences and maybe some similarities between EMDR and brain spotting. So, you know, I've done many videos on what is brain spotting and what is EMDR. I thought it would be kind of cool to help inform you guys side by side what the two of them look like and how we kind of choose uh, which one to use for anybody that walks into the office. So let's start with the general concept of what EMDR is like and how it could be similar and different in comparison to brain spotting. EMDR by and large, which again stands for eye movement, desensitization, and reprocessing. It's a mouthful. Um, by and large is a very structured type of trauma processing. Both brain spotting and EMDR work with the limbic system, the very specific part of your brain that holds emotions and memories and negative cognitions and all sorts of things that we really specifically look at when targeting trauma work. So EMDR is a way to go about this that's very structured. There are eight phases of EMDR and it starts Phase one starts the day you walk into the office, really getting to know who you are, develop the rapport, um, take an extensive background history of, of who you are, where you came from, and really looking at the target of what it is of why you're coming in and how EMDR can help. Then there's a lot of grounding and resourcing um, there's evaluating levels of PTSD or trauma or dissociation to see kind of what parameters we're working with and how to keep you feeling safe when doing things like trauma processing. Um, so after doing a lot of grounding and resourcing, I've done videos on what that means. If you want to go check that out, see some examples. Um, <clears throat> then we kind of start really zooming into what it is that you want to work on. It could be something um, that we would consider a one-time experience. I use the example of a motor vehicle accident. Maybe it's the passing of a dear family member. Um, maybe it's a divorce. And we also talk about, are we talking about what we call complex trauma, complex PTSD? Um, and that could very well mean things that have happened repeatedly over a lifespan. So sensitive topics like abuse um, or neglect, family of origin things, things that maybe just didn't, that didn't happen once, but have happened over and over. Even maybe things like bullying, if you were bullied throughout school or by your siblings or anything like that. We want to really look and take inventory of what it is that you want to focus on and find as much structure around it as we can so that by doing EMDR, we're getting all of our ducks in a row and crossing things off as we complete them. It's very organized. Once we have that target set, we, do, we, we go through what we call a protocol. And that's a series of eight to 10 questions that again, really narrows down what it is that we're working on, how you feel about what we're working on, what are the negative and positive beliefs around this? How has it impacted you? What's your takeaway from these experiences? We're asking very specific questions. We're getting you in tune with your body. When you think about this event, where do you feel that in your body? There's a lot of education and support that goes into EMDR before we ever even start. Once the protocol is set up and you, the client, are feeling as ready as you can to embark on the next step, <clears throat> we go through what's called the desensitization phase. That's where the bulk of the work is done, I would say. In the desensitization phase, that's where we're really beginning to comb out, um, detangle, understand, and make sense of what happened. And this is done in a very sensitive way um, where you, the client, get to have all the control on how far we go, how deep we go, um, in terms of what material is being brought up. And throughout the desensitization phase, the therapist is being um, very aware of, kind of monitoring, if you will, 
looking for signs of window of tolerance, of distress. We can add grounding skills as we go along. And the desensitization phase can take anywhere from one or two sessions to many, many, many sessions, depending on what comes up and what it's connected to and what the little tangents are. And we don't really know what those are until we get in there. Once the desensitization phase is complete, we know that because there's tangible, measurable evidence that says you were feeling a nine out of 10 on the activation scale about this when we started. And through the, the sessions together that we've done, you're now at a zero. Maybe you're at a one and we can talk about why you're at a one. But it's not until we get to a zero or a one that we can fully say, at least for this specific target, that we have completed the desensitization phase. So that's something that's really great about EMDR is that there is tangible and measurable evidence of have we sorted through all of this? Is there anything that we're missing? And we don't really move to the next step until we have desensitized or brought that activation level to a zero or a one. After the desensitization phase, we go into a positive cognition installation phase. Fancy way of saying desensitization is kind of beginning to pull things out and organize it and make sense of it and desensitize. The installation phase is where we put something in. Okay, so we're pulling out, we're making sense, we're relieving and finding a lot of healing. Now it's appropriate to put in to your nervous system a positive cognition, <clears throat> a belief that you wish and desire to have about yourself given the topic of this target. You don't have to fully believe in it yet. That's part of the installation process. So through the installation process, we're using the bilateral stimulation very similarly to how we do um, in the desensitization phase, but it just feels different. Um, I call this the feel good phase of EMDR because we are strengthening the feel goods and positives about you especially in regard to something that in the past, maybe even very recent past, has been painful or scary. Now we can find relief and now we can find empowerment and, and resiliency with being able to embed this po positive cognition. Okay, so from there, we go into what's called future template where we're covering all of our bases of past, present, and future. Future template is one of my most favorite things to do. I have another video about that if you wanna look at it more in depth. Future template is an amazing thing to do um, and it's suitable to do after desensitization and installation. I know I'm throwing a lot of words at you. After future template, we do a lot of body scan work. We make sure that when you think about the target, when you think about core beliefs and everything like that, you've learned the new skill of really reading your body from head to toe and sensing into where you might feel activation or distress. And we just wanna kind of squeeze that lemon and so to speak, we call it squeezing the lemon, get every last drop out of any activation or distress so that when you are finished with the EMDR process, we have successfully completed every phase of the eight phases of EMDR and we have a measurable way of looking at how successful we were. So in a nutshell, that's as concise as I can make it. EMDR is very structured. You start with this step, you don't go to the next step till you finish the next step. For many individuals, this feels safe. They want to know what's next. They want to know um, or I guess have some predictability in their future when talking about and bringing up really traumatic things, things that are uncomfortable to talk about. They want some safety and comfort in knowing what the process is. So let's kind of juxtapose this with uh, brain spotting. Brain spotting, again, is it's different in the way that you process and some people prefer it over the more structured way. Some people don't like the structure and they say, I don't wanna feel confined. I just want the processing to happen. I want this to be as organic as possible. I don't need all the steps, just make me feel better. Brain spotting for these individuals is perfect. So instead of 
distinct and calculated phases, brain spotting is much more, I don't know what you call it, maybe just more flexible in terms of how you're going to pick a target, uh, how we're discussing it, how we're setting it up, and the processing part is very different too. So any good therapist, when you first meet a new client, you're still going to get the, you know, have the discussions to gain rapport, um, which is develop a relationship that feels trustworthy. You're still going to want to take an inventory and background history and get to know the client as much as possible. That is important. We can even test and evaluate for dissociation and panic attacks and all those things. That's all well and good. It's in the processing part that feels really different. And it's very magical, just in a different way. So as you know, with brain spotting, it is all about the visual field, right? So if you are looking at my nose right now on your computer or on your phone, you probably can see other things, maybe office walls, or if you're laying in bed, you can see the pillows next to you, or maybe a window is bringing in some daylight. That's your peripheral vision. And all of that is your visual field. And that's what we're working with. So we decide what we want to work on. We really zoom in and say, okay, how do you feel about this when you think about it? Where do you feel that in your body? Body work is also very important here. Understanding where and how the activation is coming up in your body. And we work together to find the spot which you've heard me talk about over and over again if you've seen any of my other videos. So when you think about this specific event that we are working on, maybe it's an event, a memory, an experience, a belief, a fear, whatever it is, we work together to find that very specific spot in your visual field. Once we find that spot, then the processing spontaneously happens. It's really cool. So what we're doing as clinicians on our side is we're helping our people, our clients stay within a window of tolerance. We're really attuned to the client to make sure that they're breathing and that they're staying in that window of tolerance, like I said, um, that, th that they're being able to process things in a way that feels safe and controlled, right? But the extent of what comes up is really up to the, the central nervous system. It's up to the limbic system. Whatever comes up, we as clinicians go with. So we talk about the head of the comet and the tail of the comet. That's kind of the lingo that we use in the brain spotting world where you, the client, are the head of the comet. Here it is going in this direction. Us as the therapist, our only job here is to stay in the tail which means if you go this way, we go this way. If you go this way, we go this way. We are following in sync with you everywhere that you go. We're not inserting our opinions. We're not using words that you're not using to describe how you feel or what's coming up. We are simply taking stride and stride with you. And that has proven to be um, a very productive way of processing activating material. It, when, when we as clinicians stay out of the way, amazing things happen as far as trauma healing and trauma processing. So if you, if you ever do try brain spotting, you might hear some of that lingo of head of the comet and tail of the comet. We're just going to follow. We're going to support you. We're here for you every step of the way. <clears throat> the processing f feels, the experience of it probably feels uh, similar to EMDR. I've done both myself multiple times. I've been on both sides of, of the room here getting treatment and being a clinician. The processing feels similar, but the way of doing it is so different. So, um, you know, you'll, you'll have your brain spotting session. You'll come back the next week or whenever your next appointment is, and we do a check-in and we say, hey, we were talking about this last week. What are you noticing now? very open-ended question. What do you notice? And we get a lot of feedback, um, very important feedback from the client at that time to see what has shifted, what has changed, what feels better, what feels worse, how they really took care of themselves if it was a tough session, 
We want to know that they're engaging in self-care. We want to know that they're um, doing everything they can to just be able to handle what came up in session. So you can kind of see brain spawning is a lot looser, if you will, and it gives the, it gives maybe more freedom around um, the setup process and what the processing feels like. EMDR, very structured. We know what the steps are. It's predictable. We know what's coming next. It really just depends on the individual, what their preferences are, what their limits and tolerances are to stressful memories, right? We want to make sure that they're not having panic attacks in our office. That's very important. So it's our job as clinicians to educate the clients on both of these options. It's our job as clinicians to make sure that they feel supported and safe no matter which way we go, if it's EMDR or brain spotting. I will leave you with this. In some cases, you can combine EMDR and brain spotting. In some ways, there can be little tiny overlaps um, with how you are administering bilateral stimulation, which is the either the sounds in the ear or the taps or the buzzers and finding a spot. So that's kind of more a more advanced video. I might do that one another time. But for people who can really explore and dig deep and they can stay within their window of tolerance, no matter kind of what subject material is coming up, it's just another alternative way to combine two amazing limbic system therapies in one. And it's also really cool to see how you can combine the two, how the two do work well together in some ways and the beautiful healing that happens on the other side. So if you are one that is looking for um, counseling therapy and you're looking specifically for trauma work and you're considering, I don't know which one, EMDR, brain spotting, hopefully this video has helped and you can kind of decide knowing yourself as well as you do, which one might be appropriate for you or for your loved one. Thank you for checking in with your wellness and I hope you have a great day.